Lead time is a key consideration for all manufacturers, including OEMs. The sooner the equipment or machine is delivered, installed, and producing goods, the sooner payment is received and cash flow is improved. However, shortening time to market can be a perilous strategic move, and one that many machine builders are often reluctant to make for fear of promising unachievable timelines and increasing the risk of quality issues. Some companies might sacrifice design efficiency for speed by increasing resources to the project, but handoffs can create inefficiencies and larger teams require more meetings, coordination, communication, and general management. I'm Mike Bassador, Managing Editor of Control Design. We'll take a look at the potential pitfalls of reducing time to market and how a few companies avoid them after this short break. The cover story in Control Design's June 2010 issue investigates the impact on machine builders when they appease customers by reducing time to market. Unless resources are added, reducing time to market can mean reducing time to execute key steps in the machine building process. Of course, more people can be allocated to the project to avoid potential quality issues, but some companies use tools such as ECAD and robotics to streamline the process. Simulation can reduce the risk associated with less time for testing and commissioning, and robotics can do the repetitive tasks more efficiently. Rick DeJong, General Manager at AEMK Systems, a Waterloo, Canada builder of high-speed vision-based robotic systems for applications in the automation, assembly, and packaging sectors, says, Robotics can play a significant factor in reducing automation lead times because they're easy to integrate and have an intuitive user interface to reduce training times. Tom Kleeman, CEO of Spartanix, manufacturer of finishing equipment in Rolling Meadows, Illinois, is with Control Design's executive editor, Jim Montague, to talk about how Spartanix is impacted by requests for reduced time to market and how it addresses those requests. Jim? All right, thanks, Mike. Tom, thanks for having us over today. Certainly, it's a pleasure. All right. Well, the first thing we always like to ask is, is you know, what kind of company is Spartanix and, and what kind of machines do you build? Okay. Spartanix is, uh, well, it was founded in the, in the mid-60s. Mm -hmm. and, and what we did, our, our key has always been to bring electro-optic technology mm -hmm. into industry, into the automation field. Mm -hmm. Our most recent product it is behind us right here. It's a laser cutter. Mm -hmm. And again, sticking with the electro-optical theme, which is really kind of our core technology here. Um, so so when, you're, when you're putting together the, the controls and automation or the components of a device like the laser cutter here, um, you know, when you're trying to get it out more quickly and get it, you know, reduce the time to market, um, I, th I think we talked about the fact that you might use more commercial off-the-shelf types of components and, and controls to get that done. Yeah, certainly when you look at your timeline, it, it shifts that, that point where you do your make or buy decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and and even, even in the longer term, if you, if you, even if you have more, more time, when, when you look at that decision, it's always tempting to, to build it in-house. Mm -hmm. And it always looks immediately. It, it feels like going out of house is more expensive. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're finding that a lot of times uh, that's a short-sighted short view. Yeah. Um, we need different bits of components for, for a machine such as this. If we can go and locate an expert in the field, an expert vendor who's going to be a partner with us, yeah. um, yes, it seems more expensive. We're writing mm -hmm. some bigger checks up front. But what happens is we've uh, we've really removed a lot of technical risk, mm -hmm. and we get the full support of that vendor all the way along the line. And I think the life cost, when we look at that as a, a company, actually comes out to be a wash, or maybe even cheaper to go outside for a lot of big pieces of this. Cool. Can, can we talk about you know on the laser cutter some of the things uh, that that might be different if you were trying to get this out and on a more uh, faster schedule? Yeah. Well, certainly. Uh, 
Well, another thing we would try to do if we were going mm -hmm. on a faster schedule is maybe try and reuse lots of components of the design. Uh -huh. These particular machines end up being full custom when they go out into the field. So right. the customer tells us the kind of web widths they want to deal with, the spindle sizes, how big are the rolls, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, but that still allows us to go back into our archives and pull out big sections of assembly Mm -hmm. and, and reuse them. And in some cases, maybe it might be a little bit of overkill. We have, we have mm -hmm. a splicing station here. That maybe, it's, maybe it's a bit wider right. than this customer really needs. Mm -hmm. But if the only added expense to us is maybe a little material savings we could do on a one-off. Mm -hmm. and, and on the other side, what we can do is avoid lots of hours of engineering yeah. and just pull an assembly out of our, our library of assemblies. Mm -hmm. well, We'll go pull that assembly out. Right. So we would try to deal with with kind of libraries of, of subcomponents of mm -hmm. of individual blocks that we can use right. to assemble. And, a and those would be machine. those would go together quicker, and you could hence go get together the much done quicker. quicker. Yes. Cool. It's All an right. Effective way to approach it. All right. Well, thanks for talking to us today. Certainly. Great. Again, a pleasure. All right. Back to you, Mike. Sometimes design characteristics can create unexpected sources for reducing time to market. For example, Highcore Machine, a Kalamazoo, Michigan builder of corrugated box making machinery, switched its control technology that created a 30% reduction in control cabinet space. Because the Motion, PLC, and HMI had built in connectivity, Highcore estimated a 50% reduction in assembly time. Mike Walter, electrical engineer at Highcore, says, with the combination of the active interface module and active line module, we eliminated the need for line reactors or line filters, thereby saving space plus mounting and hardwiring time. Reducing time to market is a combination of trade-offs, increased resources, and planned technology implementations. Find out how more machine builders are addressing the demands for reducing time to market in the Control Design June cover story. You can read the entire article at controldesign.com slash time to market. I'm Mike Bassador. Thanks for watching.